Right, today I'm going to um, show you quilting, hand quilting, without using a hoop and without using any thimbles. There's lots of different ways you can um, hand quilt. This is one I've been trying recently and it's been quite successful for me. Um, I've marked up, I like to use dry soap to uh, mark up my, um, see it makes a lovely mark, my quilt. Um, a little pair of scissors. I got some nice, um, I think it's a 40 weight um, a cotton hand quilting thread. And I don't get on with quilting needles. I'm sorry. They're too tiny for me. Um, I, so I, I've been using sharps and I've been using the number eight. So that's worked for me. So you, you'll need to try and see what works for you. Um, I, I've tried different methods of hand quilting. And I've had to come up with a way that works for me. So I'll thread my needle and I'm just going to put a knot in the end. I like to, I like to bury my threads. Now this is, um, I think this is an oak shot fabric. So it's a fair, fairly openish weave. It's harder to hand quilt with a very tight weave. If you use a thick cotton, heavyweight cotton, it'll be harder to, to work. And the batiks I find quite hard to work. So you'll find what works for you. I got in this, I've got um, a high loft polyester wadding, which gives you the nice uh, bumpy, lumpy feeling to the, to the quilting. So we'll start here with this leaf. I'm going to start at the top there. I'll just remark that little bit so that you can see it better. There you go. Now, the most important thing, um, somebody told me when I first started quilting, whichever way you're quilting, is to put your needles straight down into your work with the first stitch. So we go into go. I'm going to pick that up, just holding it between these two fingers. Oops, these two fingers. Thumb and those two fingers. And we're going to go straight down. And that's the secret, is the going straight down. You're not going to go in like that. You're going to go straight down. And then pull it back up. And when you can feel there's about oh, an eighth of an inch underneath, you flatten your needle and push it back up. Once it comes up, you let go of that tension that you were holding there and you fetch your needle flat again, pushing it down into your work. As soon as it goes down, then you need to put your um, fingers there again and bring it, hold it a little tighter to bring it up. Once you can see it come up, you're going to let go of that tension. You may want to pull your needle back a bit if you want a smaller stitch and push it back down into your work. Once you can feel it go through, then you flatten the needle and you may pull it back a little bit to bring the needle back up. Now, then you pull the the quilted through. I got so overexcited I forgot to bury my thread. I'll start that again for you now. So I like to bury my thread so I'll start an inch or so away from where I wanted the work to start and I bring my thread up and I've only gone through to the wad and I haven't gone through to the back of the work and I'm going to pull my thread and just let the, the knot pop into the work. And it'll stay buried inside the um, the warden. So I'll show you again now. So we're going to go straight down. So on the back, you can see that that, that needle's come through on the back. Then I'm going to fetch that needle back up until there's only a little bit of it sticking out. And then lay it flat on my work in order to push the point of the needle back up. And it sort of goes over my nail. It's not going into my thumb. And then I'm flattening that again. See that rocking movement? I'm flattening that again to push that back down. As soon as I feel it go down, I, I pull back a little bit before I push it back up. Now, the needle is not actually um, sticking into my or stabbing into my finger. I found with the very small thin quilted needles they're finer and they might do that but these ones are just that little bit thicker. So you're going straight down with that first stitch, bringing it up. My finger is underneath, feeling for that, okay. And then fetching it flat to the work, pulling it back, pushing it and then 
rocking it. It's this rocking method they're talking about. And I pull mine back a little bit before, before I rock it up because I want the stitch to be quite small. And we just pull those four through. Right, and I'll show you again now. So it's straight down and let the needle go flat, but I'm pulling it back a bit because that would be too, too big a stitch, I can feel it. Push it back through the work and it should come through quite easily. I mean, it'll depend on the fabrics you're using, the cotton you're using and the, the needles that you're using will make a difference. Once it comes up, we're pushing it back down, right? So we're pushing it back down. Once we can feel it go down, we're flattening it to come back up. If you're doing a straight line, you can get six or eight um, stitches on. If you're going around corners, there's, you know, four. I mean, if it's really tight, you might only be doing two. And that's basically how I quilt in the hand. So I'm just holding the work between the two, you know, that hand and working the needle with my uh, other hand. And it's just a movement coming back and full. And it shouldn't be hard work. You should have stitches as well on the back. So that's just one of the ways you can you can hand quilt. So I hope that helps. Oh, as well as that, when I finish, I usually go into the work for an inch or two along the line I'm going to stitch along. I'll do that three times. One, two, three. And a rush now and then when I bring it up the last time you pull a little tightness on it <coughs> and then snip it with the scissors and when you leave it go that tail just goes into into your work there you go bye